Hey, what's up? I'm Matt Keddy from Keddy Woodshop, and today I'm going to show you the new Elysian cabinet. Now, it might be pronounced a different way. Uh, there's a robot that actually does the pronunciation for me because I can't English good. So let's go and check that out. Elysian or Elysian. All right. So first step, you want to mark off your wood so that you can draw your radiuses on it using the radius jig that's outlined in the downloadable plan that's on my web website, keddywoodshop.com. So once you have all the measurements from those plans, you can mark your radiuses, cut them out with a jigsaw, scroll saw, or band saw, depending on what you have. I'm using a jigsaw because, you know, it's portable and cordless and tears right through there, but you do get a bit of deflection. So, you know, if that does occur, no sweat. If you got a spindle stander, you can clean that up. Now check out this cut. It's a little complicated. So, uh, yeah, how are you going to do this? Figure it out. Oh, there you go. Reverse the cut. Yeah, makes it easy. So there's that spindle sander I was talking about. Uh, on the left-hand side, on your left-hand side as you're looking at it, you can see that the bevel uh, or the deflection of the blade is there, and that's what we're kind of cleaning up. And uh, you could do that to all your cuts. There should be one, two, three, four, five cuts. Uh, once those are all cleaned up, you can mark your front skirt on your legs. And basically, it's three and a half inches. You just kind of note that so that you know where you're going to drill your pocket holes and you don't go over. Uh, I'm not a big advocate of pocket holes for furniture design, especially out of uh, wood that can you know, be impacted by the humidity changes in house and things like that. But this thing's staying at my house, so I'm not worried about it. I know my climate and uh, I think we'll be good. So once that's uh, all pocket holed up, you want to put some star bond glue on there, which the catalyst was sprayed on the leg and it bonds in 10 seconds. Still want to clamp it though so that it doesn't walk when you run your screws in. Now, since I'm using pin oak, I'm actually using the fine thread screws, which uh, bite a little better. They're not going to split the wood the same as the coarse thread that you would use on plywood or pine or something of that sort. Softwood, always use coarse hardwoods always use fine screws fine thread screws and you'll be in good shape so run your pocket holes into the front skirt drill some more pocket holes on your shelf now again all the placement everything is explained in the plan which you can download for free off my website and if you want to you can even donate some money uh, which would be cool because this you know do this for free and uh, it'd be nice to get some rewards for that so yeah, no, I'm just, I'm not joking, actually. I'm dead serious. If you want to donate money, please do it. But <laughs> All right, so a little bit of uh, muscle was taken to put that shelf, uh, the bottom floor, into the uh, the cabinet because we just kind of glued it based off of the uh, the wood. And the we know that the bottom thing was square, so when you put it in the pocket holes, pull everything together. Now we're putting the middle shelf in, and we're measuring up. I think it's 12 and a half inches on both top and bottom, which gives us a three quarter inch line, which fits our shelf perfectly. Now it should be a really snug fit because you got a lot of cantilevering going on, but that shelf will push everything out, true everything up because we know the shelf is square. We measured corner to corner. So you go from top left to bottom right, and uh, that gives you a square image. Now. The uh, pocket holes will pull everything in. Now this one here, you might need to do a little bit of clamping. Mine was actually really good. Oak's easy to work with, especially if it's true. It just kind of doesn't bend too much. Uh, apply some more of your star bond adhesive and add your uh, door sides. And you could screw them in. Now you just repeat both sides. I clamp them, glue, clamp, screw. All right, so for the top, we just lay the, uh, the cabinet onto our tabletop, trace our lines, and then you'd be using pocket holes to attach it, but I did mine like a maniac because it was end grain. And I did biscuits, which you can see they're a little tricky, at least it is for me, uh, because I can't math. Apparently I can't English, I can't do any of that. But once you get it lined up, you can just clamp it down and it's pretty much good to go. Using some frog tape, we're going to attach our hinges. They just kind of hold it in place and that way you can get your reference points and Everything plays nice. Now they're measured up three inches. Again, it's all in the plan. So like this is just like the quick video, like a visual representation of what you'll have to do. It's, it's not by any means extensive or comprehensive, so to speak. But go ahead and put your screws into the, I think it's to be the first eight on the bottom, which would be attaching to the door sides. And then you can drill your holes for the doors themselves. 
Uh, I put one and one on each side so I could see. Now mine's sticking up because my alignment was off and that's mapped out on how to correct that in the plans. You want to do your door catch. It's just three screws. I didn't really think uh, about staying out of the picture when I recorded that, but I scribbled some pencil marks on the wood. And uh, that's a pretty common practice, so you know what you've sanded, what you haven't, and how long you have to stay on a grit. So using a dull pencil, you can scribe them on there. And if you got an old synthetic cork, if you're like me and you like to get drunk periodically, save the corks if they're synthetic, and you can clean up your sandpaper so it lasts a bit longer. You could also get a giant eraser, like those kids' erasers also work well. So we're going to get a half-inch rabbit bit for our palm router. And we're going to notch out where the backer board's going to go. Uh, you know, you could do it this way. You could just staple it right on, however you want to do it. If you don't have a router, it's optional. You don't need to do it this way. It just makes things look clean. Once that's cut out, you want to get your wood chisel and just square the corners because they will be rounded. And uh, you'll be ready to put some finish on. Now, we didn't put the backer on because we want to be able to get inside, do all that stuff. So it's cut, but you want to put your finish on first. We're using armor seal. And the stuff, you want to sand to 220 then apply your armor seal, then sand progressively past that, and you'll get a much better finish. Now, all finishes have different recommendations. That's theirs, and uh, they know what they're talking about. Look at that end grain. That was nice, right? So there we are sanding at 320 on what was already armor sealed. I think I went up to 400. I did three coats on this. I laid my backer board in, fired in some staples, attached the hardware, and that's it. So easy.